Okay, great. All right, hi, Helen. Uh, welcome and thanks for uh, talking to me. And I just wondered if you could just introduce yourself and just tell us a bit about surrogate, surrogacy concern. Of course. Well, thank you very much, Lucy, for having me and for inviting me to talk and by extension for introducing me to all of your brilliant members at Family Education Trust. It's a real privilege to be speaking to you all this evening. Uh, my name is Helen Gibson and I'm the founder of Surrogacy Concern one of two major uh, surrogacy uh, concern groups, I suppose, uh, for want of a better phrase, surrogacy critical groups in the UK, the other yeah. being Stop Surrogacy Now UK. Stop Surrogacy Now UK, who I work very closely with, were founded in 2019 in mm -hmm. response to the Law Commission for England and Wales and the Scottish Law Commission setting up um, a consultation into domestic surrogacy. And I set up my own group in March of this year in response to the Law Commission um, bringing out their proposals for reform. Um, and I was very, very concerned about what I'd read and to see what they had suggested to be taken forward. And so I set this organisation up uh, just to complement Stop Surrogacy Now UK, but in order to be able to work in a more fleet of foot way um, as an, another campaigner. So that's why I was set up and we are campaigning against plans by the Law Commission to liberalise domestic surrogacy in Britain. And we've also become involved in raising awareness of women, particularly young women, being targeted for egg retrieval, not just by fertility clinics, but also by, uh, unbelievably, the Scottish Government. So those are two strands of my work. I do this in my spare time around my job and my child and uh, Stop Surrogacy Now UK are the same. They run their campaign in their spare time and we work closely with other organisations, particularly Nordic Model Now, Women's Place UK and in Scotland, groups like Glasgow Tactical Feminists, Women Won't Weeshed for Women Scotland. Um, so we've been working with them a lot on the egg retrieval campaign, including with Murray Blackburn Mackenzie policy and with others to try and raise awareness of what's been happening. So why why do you think this is all happening now? Why is there this big push towards women being surrogates now and the big push towards young women to be egg donors? What What's going on to, to, to make this? Well, I think the thing? demand is growing. I think the demand is growing looking for ways to have a family um, I think it's become far more normalized in recent years there is very little media scrutiny of surrogacy it's all very positive stories about British surrogacy in the media most journalists don't know anything about it so they don't ask very mm. detailed questions about it scrutiny is not rigorous it's not very balanced coverage you get a lot of soft lifestyle type stories being peddled on BBC Breakfast or the radio. You know, Times Radio did a piece just today where a journalist was talking about writing a piece in the Times this weekend on using egg donors and why that needs to be normalised and the taboo needs to go. Talking about it in the context of older celebrities having children and obviously needing egg donors. Um, so there is a push. I think there is a deliberate push being mounted by surrogacy agencies. They want the law on domestic surrogacy liberalised because they want to grow the domestic market. And they're very open about this. The Law Commission um, themselves say they think commercial surrogacy abroad is exploitative. Therefore, they want to try and encourage more domestic surrogacy without mm. recognising that actually lots of surrogacy in Britain well in our view all surrogacy is always exploitative but actually there are lots of negative stories in Britain which I can go into a bit later if you like mm. but those are never told or heard so those in power making decisions over this aren't in an informed position mm. and actually during the Law Commission consultation when um, uh, some women were consulted at the end of the process because the Law Commission realised oh haven't actually proactively consulted with many women on this, probably ought to. They really just consulted with surrogacy agencies and uh, people who wanted to be parents and law firms, lots of law firms involved. Um, they had some surrogate mothers go in and see them, uh, taken in by 
some of the organisations I've named for meetings with the law commissioners, surrogate mothers who had regret and had bad experiences. Mm. And one woman was crying to the law commissioner overseeing the work, talking about how she was traumatised and had been used and then abandoned by the commissioning parents. And then at the end, he sat and listened to this poor, broken-hearted woman who has severe PTSD, by the way, mm. uh, pouring her heart out and sat back at the end and said, mm, yes, but I do think we need to do something for infertile couples. Wow. It's... So they're having the evidence presented to them yeah. and they don't care. Now, what we have to understand is at the moment in Britain, you can't advertise for surrogate mothers and you can't um, sort of tout for them. You can join a surrogacy agency and women can join a surrogacy agency and then they hold what are effectively speed dating events. But you're yeah. still not really allowed to ask the woman, do you want to be a surrogate mother? You just have to get to know them and then she sort of offers. But at the moment, that keeps the numbers quite small. Whereas if you allow some of the things the Law Commission want, like open advertising, then what you would get is it would boom very quickly. Yeah. And sucked up effectively into that vortex would be women, A, who are motivated by being poor because there are significant expenses paid to you during in your surrogacy. So although paid surrogacy is illegal, we have seen expenses on average around £15,000 per pregnancy paid monthly like a salary which to a low paid woman or a woman struggling with the cost of living crisis or struggling to look after her own children is a, a lot of money. Yeah. But when you see some examples, which we found that go up as high as 60,000 pounds, five cases in 2018 of 60,000 pounds, this starts to look like we already have paid surrogacy by the back door. Definitely. So, if you imagine surrogacy adverts on the tube, on buses, yeah, they won't say become a surrogate mother. They'll say something like, do something amazing. Give the gift of life. Yeah, Give I've seen those. Yeah. Parents. yeah, that's what it would say. And into that, you would get sucked women who have never thought about it before. Don't perhaps know anyone who's done it before. And are coming at it, some genuinely wanting to do it, and some from a point of need. Yeah. Now, the problem with surrogacy, even if you were to say that all the women you found absolutely really want to do it, nobody's forcing them. And we know in family surrogacy circumstances, often there is coercion and grooming and manipulation mm. and pressure. But even if all things being equal, the woman really wanted to do it, what you could still have, A, you've got how society treats women and grooms them from the cradle to be kind, which means that no decision women ever make is fully made without a wider societal context. Yeah. But surrogacy, and we should always remember this primarily, is always bad for the child. Yeah. Because at the point of birth, it means the child is taken right away from their birth mother. Mm. Now, we know from a million studies into attachment and early childhood development, why that is so bad for children. So with adoption, adoption in Britain is generally a last resort done for safeguarding purposes. Yeah. There's pains taken now to try and keep mothers and babies together. If they can't do that, there are all kinds of things that are done like life story books, contact kept with mother where possible, letters exchanged between mother and child or phone calls. But when it comes to surrogacy, we suddenly say none of that matters. Yeah. Well, why doesn't it? Either it does or it doesn't. Yeah. But you can't say it does, but just we're going to ignore it for these circumstances. And it's all the more pernicious when you consider that quite a significant number of UK surrogate mothers use their own egg in the pregnancy mm. and are artificially inseminated. So the child is often related to only one of the commissioning parents, usually the father. Or often, if this surrogate mother's own egg isn't used, they use a donor egg. So the commissioning mother, if there is one, is not related to the child. And uh, we have this situation where even if you are not genetically related to the baby, you've grown that baby in your body. It knows your voice. It knows the taste of your amniotic fluid, which means it knows your smell. It comes out needing one woman and one woman only. And that woman mm -hmm. is you, the mum, right? Now, 
what the other the many things that they want to do with the law commission proposals including a minimum age of 21 for surrogate mothers and 18 for commissioning parents but the worst thing about it really that they want to do is take parental rate rights away from the mother at birth now, that's what we see in commercial surrogacy, yeah. or indeed in some commercial surrogacies in the US, you see parental rights moving away before birth. So that if the woman is very sick and needs to have a termination, for example, she often loses the ability to make that choice. Mm -hmm. So she's lost control over her own reproductive system even before the baby is born. Mm -hmm. um, or vice versa, often we've seen examples of surrogate mothers wanting to keep a child to term but being told no you need an abortion for medical grounds because we have to start cancer treatment for mm. example mm. there was a case a year or two ago where a woman wanted to deliver the child early in order to start her cancer treatment and try and give the child the chance of living you know on an incubator mm. and the commissioning parents said no don't bother because it will oh, be like really disabled. Just horrible. There, well, there was a case just that I've just seen. I think it was last week in China where there's there's talk there's there's um, yeah, and that does not surprise yeah. me at all. Like China, fact. it's illegal, but because of the size of the yeah. population, people will do a great deal. And what's common in China is men, single men, going and doing surrogacy in the states, and also uh, straight couples going to the states. To have a baby through surrogacy, even when they're perfectly capable of carrying a child themselves, because if you give birth in the United States, the child is automatically a U.S. citizen. So yeah. they're known as anchor babies. So it means your child wow, has the right to live in that. the country. So they oh, can later on it's, get the it, child back into America without the need of a green card. It's, it's it's so the whole the whole thing, the whole reasoning behind it is just so yeah. selfish, isn't it? There is no there is it's no. It's just it's just narcissism the, on steroids. No, not yeah. not. It not is like to the it's so child. shocking. It's yeah, beyond it is. belief. It yeah. is. It is. It's. It is awful. And and I, su I suppose for for from from our point of view, from Family Education Trust, obviously we we are promoting the. The welfare of of children and uh, promoting stable families and and we know that all the evidence shows that children do better when when they're raised by their their, their biological mothers and fathers within yeah. within a stable family and 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 you can't ignore the evidence but it would seem yeah. that in the case of promoting it's surrogacy like this, you're just ignoring it completely because it's all about yeah. what 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 these selfish adults and i suppose like like you said narcissistic adults want and they're not considering the the, the well-being or the the needs of the child at all i mean it would no. take, take somebody no, very hard to come last yeah come definitely last. i watched a truly horrific video of uh, a two-time surrogate mother filming herself in her car berating another surrogate mother who'd wanted to hold the baby and this had kind of gone round surrogacy circles mm. that the, this woman had done this terrible thing and the woman filming it was a, a terrible act of internalized misogyny it's one of the most misogynistic things i've ever seen like real hatred of other women mm. and she said to the camera she said it's not about you it's not about the baby it's about the intended parents Wow. So it's not about the baby. And no, it isn't. Because Seriously if you were starting up. with child welfare as your starting point, you wouldn't agree to surrogacy. Yeah, it's just it is really quite frightening. Yeah. Um so what 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 can what can people do? Obviously I guess a lot of people are seeing this and being very alarmed at what's happening. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, my teenage daughter saw uh, she, she follows um people that like go on like backpacking and taking camper vans and traveling around which she's about to serving a year out when she's when she's finished school soon and there was one particular um, influencer on on instagram who would base people had asked her a question of how she was funding her nomadic lifestyle in her camper van oh, is this the traveling surrogate uh no it wasn't a surrogate but she basically said really casually she said um she said oh well um i donated my eggs and she said and i got fifteen thousand dollars from donating my eggs um and so that's why i don't have to work and then when i ran out of money i'll just do it again and this this girl was about 22 23 and oh, she just no. said it's so blasé like there was no discussion of the risk factors or anything and yeah. i thought oh my goodness but well, i don't of... think the clinics make the yeah. risk factors no. set the risks out to them it's quite frightening um, to say, oh, well, I'm living this lovely, lovely lifestyle with no cares, yeah. and, and it doesn't matter. And I, I don't think yeah. people realise 
why it does matter. Well, I don't think young women are being informed that they can die. Yeah. Okay. So what everybody needs to know is that at least two women in Britain have died from complications arising from ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which is caused by being put through egg retrieval, for which there is no cure. And when OHSS kicks in, the fluid builds out from your follicles, which have been artificially uh, overstimulated to mature lots of eggs at once. And that fluid spreads out around the body and can go up to the heart and lungs. And this is when you get blood clots forming, which will kill you. Mm. And they have to hope against hope that if you develop OHSS, it's mild and the body writes itself because there's mm. nothing they can do for you. <laughs> and we've currently got a national government in Scotland targeting women for this with no health risks on the adverts. Oh, it's just insane. Also, yeah. I don't, I, again, I don't think that young women realise that that, that no, girls no, are born with the no one knows, no one finite amount of eggs knows, that, they're, that they're going to have and not thinking about the, the possible issues for their own fertility in the future because, again, think the fertility of young women is something again that I don't think is very is discussed very much you know about in terms of having their own families it's sort of put off and put off as if it's sort of this thing that you can just keep on going ad infinitum and um yeah I, just this the way that it's promoted like it's this yeah just it's really thing. it's very anti-woman actually yeah. because with the whole egg freezing thing now it's a con right yeah so they're telling women freeze your eggs in your 20s don't worry about your fertility then till your 40s except it's a lie only 10 percent of um frozen eggs result in a successful pregnancy and if you try and get pregnant in your 40s you're far more likely to miscarry mm. so once you've miscarried lots of times what are you going to need a surrogate mother yeah. and there's differing opinions on whether eggs are as healthy frozen as fresh i mean it the whole thing is just appalling like it oh. sounds like we're talking about an order in a supermarket i know um, i know and it's a con because they're getting women to freeze their eggs which they don't need to do and which won't work anyway then they're getting them to pay tens of thousands of pounds for the process mm -hmm. then they're saying oh you know what we'll give you half off the cost of your storage if you share half your eggs which means your half of eggs go off to another couple who might get pregnant with them and you potentially don't and also they might end up in research and we know that what the hfea are now pushing for is um setting up a national embryo bank without specific research products being needed to use the embryos and also looking at how they can uh get around well get around, i've got to pick my words really carefully but how they can further the science around getting uh gamete cells out of embryos so they've already created a synthetic embryo last year so they're looking at how they can further that and further creation of synthetic it's, gamete just horrific isn't it and the, the other connection yeah. as well that we've, it's that we've mad not, it's talking not, about it's so dystopian it's so like something out of a horror film. yeah that we've not touched on is the is the connection with um the pushing of uh transgender children as well yeah, um, yeah. because well, there exactly. was the, well, when you've sterilized your body you yeah. can't carry a child or you've got no, no the next so thing you need somebody else's yeah, because there was the there was the surrogacy conference wasn't there i think at the end of last year in, in london yeah modern where family the, show sponsored yeah, by mermaid yeah, sponsored by Mermaids, which which I I find that um, bewildering that that wasn't a national scandal that that they could see that this 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 um, very that this charity that's being investigated by, mm. by the charity commission for serious breaches and safeguarding is sponsoring this conference. Um, this is just creating a pipeline, isn't it? They're creating new customers, so yeah, it's yeah, yeah, sterilise them. And then they're going to need so you have to have a supply of eggs. And this is the thing, what the Scottish government did, and I don't think they had a clue they were doing this. They've not been very clever about mm -hmm. it, really. They sort of equalised IVF treatment a few years ago to, to do away with, as they said it, the postcode lottery. So that wherever you live in Scotland, everybody has an entitlement to one or two rounds of IVF on the NHS. The problem with doing that is, You'll get some people who go to the NHS and say, well, we don't have any eggs mm. for obvious reasons. And so then the NHS, which has said will provide everyone with IVF treatment, has to procure some eggs. 
So they've made the state a procurer of women's eggs. So this is about targeting the individual woman to give to her eggs, draw down upon them, use them as a collective resource to be shared out and distributed amongst the general public. This is it's crazy. It's, it, it's as if it, there's now this idea that everybody has got the right to have a child and that yeah, there isn't yeah, yeah. And such, it's a, not such a thing. It's, it, it, it's, it's crazy. And, and again, it, that child welfare is just not even considered in, in any no, of this. It's, it's not. And nobody's thinking about the ethics of the child no. growing up as a a person who is donor conceived and we know that now the first generation of 18 year olds have come of age this year and they can access their donor information yeah but it's still perfectly possible that for some surrogacies that you go abroad to get eggs or embryos and then come back and have your surrogate mother give birth here or you yourself give birth here with anonymous eggs and embryos it is, it is it is really quite frightening for the future because we've, we're already seeing generations of children now who, who are really impacted by mental health issues for, mm -hmm. for various other, other reasons of other, other right. things that are going on in society. And to think, and we, we, we know so much when you look at adoptive families in particular, and we've had this in my own family because my, my husband grew up without the father and has only very recently, in the last couple of months, discovered his biological father actually through ancestry.com oh, wow. through, through a dna test and um, uh, that's thrown up all kinds of things and he's in yeah his we're 40s. seeing that a lot of people yeah doing and, that, and yeah. It, it has had a huge impact on everybody on, on our whole life and and obviously he's an adult having to deal that with an adult and, and imagining children dealing with this without without having that that the stable roots from knowing who they are and knowing mm -hmm. who their who their parents are it, it is yeah. is quite shocking thinking of how are these children going to cope it's a destabilizing yeah thing, yeah it, it is without without the roots but but anyway so we're all probably people watching this going to be completely horrified if they didn't know about what was going on didn't know what was going on about the creation of surrogacy uh, or the, the the targeting of women and young women for for harvesting their eggs and for for offering up their bodies to be a, a vessel for people who mm -hmm. want to have children so what what can we do about it? So if, if people are watching this and thinking, "Hack, this is absolutely awful," what can we do to make a difference? So what what can people do at home if they're not out there well, campaigning? Well, there's a few things. If they live in Scotland, they can email their government and say, "Stop targeting women for egg retrieval. This yeah. is unacceptable and shouldn't happen." If they live elsewhere in the UK, they can write to um, uh, the government and say, "Don't take forward." surrogacy law reform now this government have said they're not going to do that because of a shortage of time but we don't know what the next government might do if there is a government of a different party so that uh, view needs to be put to them yeah. so you could write to the labor front bench and you should also write to your own mp and that is what we would encourage people to do yeah okay yeah, we was also because we're also starting to see it in schools a bit. We've started to hear from parents saying that this is being the surrogacy in terms of family creation is a normal thing to be taught in relationship and sex education. Yeah, yeah so, that's something uh, that the process. I think that's something that parents good. need to be really aware of as well. Um, I think that it's important that parents ask to see the PHC curriculum to see what's being taught because mm -hmm. um, they don't generally that they'll give you bullet points, but they don't generally give you the, all of the work plans and the lesson plans. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that people no no that they're right to be able to look at it to be able to complain about that yeah um that's right. so yeah so so basically i guess your message would be that people need to start taking action that they need to start writing to their mps and yeah they do if they're government. concerned about this it's not enough to sit on your hands because the other yeah. side are very very well organized and they're feeding stories into the media positive narrative stories to the media all the time about surrogacy and the truth about how exploitative it is and how bad it is for children yeah. is not being heard uh, to say nothing of the voices of surrogate mothers we know of in this country who've got regret and um, have struggled and suffered as a result of the practice. So we would urge everybody to look into it more and they can follow us on Twitter if they want to at Surrog Concern. They can contact us on email, but we would urge them in the first instance to simply email your MP and yeah. email you know, the Labour front bench, email um, the Women's Minister Maria Caulfield and say, I don't agree with this and I want my opinion to be taken into account. 
great. Okay, right. I will uh, I will add the links um after the uh, the interview so people can can do that and can get in contact uh, with the women's minister and anybody else that we think might make a difference. Definitely. So thank you very much for your time. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.